Hello and welcome to another Python Hub video. Today we are going to be discussing about a machine learning model that identifies plant-based diseases by just scanning the types of leaves. It scans the leaves and outputs what kind of disease is affecting that certain plant. We are going to be doing this by training our model on a data set that contains 70,000 training images and 17,000 testing images. The, amount, the types of plants we have are seen, before, seen here but we'll get to that later. First we import the necessary libraries like NumPy, Pandas and OS and Matplotlib and then also our Torch to build the models, TQDM Notebook to import it, I mean export it and we set a project name to Course Project Plant Diseases Classification. We set our OS list DIRs and then we move on to finding the number of unique plants in the dataset. So we run this, we set a unique plant data list, uh, I mean unique plants list and then we load the, the, we load the list of plants, the dataset and then we split it and also now we can append the amount of number of unique plants and then the types of unique plants. So we've seen that there are 14 number of there are 14 different unique plants and they are like strawberry, blueberry, potato, pepper, the same list that we saw here up on top. And next, since we've asset, uh, like since we've cleared the data set, now we're gonna load and load training and test data set as tensors. We're gonna transform these images to tensors so that it'd be easier to train your model. So we resize them as 128 pixels and we assign them to their, nesses, um, to their respective variables. And now as we've seen before, we can see that the length of the training images are 70,000 and the length of the testing images are 17,000 plus. And now we have the number of classes. The classes are basically the number of labels. Here we have the healthy apple leaf and here we have the apple leaves with different kinds of diseases like apple scab, black rot and cedar apple rust. Same here for blueberry, we have the healthy blueberry leaf and its very respective diseases. This is how we train the model to identify if a leaf is healthy or it is being infected by a certain disease. Now here let's visualize a single image. Visualizing means we just see the tensor data. So we, we know the image shape is a tensor of torch of size 128 to 128 image label is zero meaning it's the first image in the data set because we've done data set zero the name is apple underscore underscore apple scab the same first class we saw here and this is the tensor value now we plot this using matplotlib and we hit plot.show we have the original image and the inverted image the inverted image makes it easier to train the data and we can see the spots where the disease is infecting it because all these different diseases are different patterns which is what makes it easier to train our models. Now we have validation data set and data loader. Here we set our random seed to 42. Torch.manual seed to random seed function and then we set our validation split to 0 0.3. Our validation size to the length of the data set into the validation split. So 30% of the data set and then we, our training size is the length of the data set minus the validation size which is the 30% of the data set and we load this into our random split function so this is going to be our data set the training size and the validation size this yeah yeah that's it and then we're going to set our batch size to 64 and then we're going to set our data loader functions here we have the data loader function for our training data set validation data set and a test data set rest all the variables remain the same for all the three batch size is going to be 64 num workers is going to be two shuffle is going to be true pin memory is also going to be true for all the three data loaders now we visualize a batch of images here we here we visualized a single image here we are going to plot all almost all the batches all the different types of images so we, here we can see various different types of leaves and the various different types of diseases that affect these leaves next we will start building the model here we build the model first with starting by the accuracy function to calculate the accuracy of the model and set the class image classification base class which is basically going to be inherited by every other model that we create our CNN model uh, the RSNet 34 model and the VGG model I think 
So here we start with our training step. We use f dot cross entropy to calculate loss. Same here for the validation step using f dot cross entropy to calculate the loss. Accuracy is out comma labels using this function itself. And then validation epoch end, we put the batch loss, epoch loss, batch accuracy and epoch accuracy and then return those values as value of validation loss and validation accuracy the validation of the model you can call it and then at the end of the epoch at the end of the training we hit the final result by setting the number of epochs the training loss the validation loss the validation accuracy and that's pretty much it the result of the validation loss and the result of the validation accuracy yes now we start by building the cnn model in the CNN model, we built the class plants underscore disease underscore model by inheriting the class we built previously. We are going to set network nn dot sequential nn dot con 2d 3. Then we are going to set the parameters to 3, 32, kernel size to 3, stride to 1, and padding to 1. And we are going to repeat these two lines, but here instead we are going to set our this second parameter to 64 and our max pool 2d to 2, 2. In this case, our output is 64 into 64 into 64. We're going to keep repeating these same things, but for different values here, we're going to set both to 64 and here for 64 and 68. Max pool 2D remains 2 comma 2, but our output becomes 128 into 32 into 32. Here also, instead, we're going to do 128 into 128 and 128 into 256. And our output's going to be this. Same here, we're going to change these values and our output changes and the same for this step. And then after that, we define the forward function where out is equal to self dot network and xp. Next, we build the VGG model, VGG 16, using transfer learning function and class plant diseases model 1 because we already have plant underscore diseases model. And we again inherit the image classification base. Here, we set the, update the model using our torch visions dot model that we imported in the beginning. We set the classifier minus one dot in features and then that is equal to an in dot linear num for not the num filters that we defined before comma 38. Again, we set the forward function. Then we build a restnet model, restnet 34 model using transfer learning again. And again, we use the pre-built models, the torch models to import resnet and pre-trained equals true num filters are again defined and then set to the nn linear function with again using 38. Again the forward function is defined and we start training and evaluation. We set our routes and we set the evaluate function where we load the model and the validation loader which is the test data, the training data and the test data and it can be anything. And the output is returned. Here we Here is where we fit the data into the model for training. So we set our history to blank, our optimizer to the model parameters, and we start for epoch in range epochs, the number of epochs. And it's, it's a for loop basically, it runs for every epoch, and we train the model. We the, append the losses, and for batch in TQDM, we find the loss here, and we train losses dot append the loss. We again append the losses into the list loss dot backwards and optimizer dot step optimizer dot zero grad and that keeps repeating and then eventually result equals evaluate model comma val loader the result train loss and then stack it model dot epoch end and history append it appends all these results into the history for review and then we return the history here we choose whether to use a gpu or a cpu so we here get the default device if your default device is a gpu like an nvidia or an amd it picks that up and inputs the cuda op um, cuda into the torch device unless uh, otherwise it uses then we do def2 device data and device and we set it to move tensors to the chosen device the tensors that we created before here, finally, we wrap a data loader to move the data to the device and then yield a batch of data after moving it to the device. And then here we put the length of the number of batches. Finally, we get the default device, which is CUDA in my case. And then we built the data device loaders, the training loader, the validation loader, and the test loader. We set them to the necessary data and the device that we're gonna use. 
then model equals two device the which model we're going to use in this case the ResNet model the plant diseases model 2 which we defined right around here the ResNet model and then we're gonna set the device which is our CUDA device and we can see the output that it prov provides now we're gonna train the model we're gonna evaluate the model with the validation loader we're gonna use history and fit the model and we're gonna start so here we can see that we start with an accuracy of 90 percent and then we dip to 79 and it goes back to 93 97 96 and it keeps repeating for around 14 epochs i think yes for 14 epochs and we end up with an accuracy of 98.46 this is for the training data now we plot the accuracy and the losses we set the plot label x label as epoch and the y label as loss the legend as training and validation and our losses versus number of epochs as the title here we plot the accuracies by plotting the x label as epoch and accuracy as y and accuracy versus number of epochs now first we plot accuracies using the history that we appended before and we can see we roughly end at the 14th epoch with it roughly about 97.5% which we found was 98.646% of accuracy in the 14th epoch and when we plot losses we can see all the validation losses and the training losses that we incurred finally we evaluate the model with the validation loader and we can see that the final accuracy that we find for the training data is 98.46% now moving on to the evaluation and prediction on test data we evaluate we initiate the mod evaluate with the model and the test data and we can see our value loss is nearly only five percent and our accuracy is 98.42 percent we've dipped in a 0.04 percent but that's not that important because 98 is actually a pretty good score so accuracy of the model on the test data is 98.42%. Now prediction on some single image of the test data. So we pull a random image or in this case, I think we pull the first image out of the test data and then we run the prediction and we can see that we found apple scab and we predicted it as apple scab indeed. Same thing we do it for apple black rot and we can predict that this is apple black rot. The model has successfully predicted that it was apple black rot. Same thing we did for Cherry and then after all that we're going to start saving the model. So we're going to save it as our ResNet model and we're going to upload it to Jovian. Here we're going to set our necessary parameters. In this case the number of epochs were 15 because we start from 0 to 14 which is basically 15 in whole numbers. And we set the, X, the, the accuracy values and the loss values and set the option to add them. We load all these into Jovian and we hit our API and the necessary parameters. And after we've locked our metrics, we commit the project and save it to our notebook. And with that comes an end of our explanation of this project. I hope you enjoyed it. Today we learned how to build a machine learning model that identifies plant-based diseases by just scanning the image of the plant. It's actually a pretty helpful model and a project that could help even maybe farmers or people who work in the agriculture field to identify what kind of diseases are affecting their crops and bring a cure to them so that it doesn't affect them drastically. Thank you for watching. This is Python Hub, signing out.